Let's go ahead and talk about this because I do think it's interesting. Jake Doolittle went ahead and posted a video called My Recent Video. I'm not sure it's an apology. I haven't pre-watched it. I want to go ahead and watch it with you guys right now. And let's see what he has to say. Obviously, I was pretty, I think... I think I was pretty critical, but also very open-minded to Jake. I assume he's going through a lot. Remember, this is a philosophy channel, so we're here to understand the why, uh, the wisdom of knowing, the acknowledgement that we know very little, um, the radical acceptance that humans are flawed and little animals, you know, evolved over time, most likely. That's my belief. Just an animal watching another animal do its thing. I'm not here to try to hold Jake to the fire. But I do want to see how he responded, because I know that must have been very stressful to have all those people going from it. And also Ethan, H3H3, he really does need to take back that idea that none of his viewers are going very hard on Jake. Lots of people are going very hard on Jake. I think H3 and H3 and all those people probably don't think about it from that perspective because they've been canceled so many times. They're probably not thinking about it from another person's perspective. But, you know, it does take a lot to handle people canceling you or criticizing you or you know even maybe dragging you for the wrong reason and so it does take a lot to be in the space so just keep that in mind as we watch hi everyone i just wanted to come on here and address the most recent video that i made in that video i spoke about a topic that's extremely sensitive to me which to be honest was my first mistake i let my emotions dictate my actions and that led to a tone that was mm. confrontational and aggressive my in you know that's interesting about that first he hasn't yet said what video it is and i wonder if he's going to keep it vague which i think is probably not good but i think it is interesting that he said his emotions were at play because this was like a four month researched video and I do believe your emotions can be that heightened for that long. Intention was to stand up for a specific group of people, but instead I came across as an asshole. I didn't consider how my words would affect others and for that I'm very sorry. I've also come to realize that no amount of explanation can undo the impact of that video. And so for the discomfort or hurt that it caused, I also apologize. I recognize that my reaction was partly fueled by my own experiences. Mm. With my nonprofit, I frequently re applications of people who are in the most terrible situations possible and hearing someone talk about health in that way really bothered who who is the person it's interesting that he's not going to actually say the name hmm interesting interesting i wonder why he's making that decision i mean what would i do i guess i don't know like what do, what an interesting decision me but that didn't mean that i needed to post a dedicated video that just turned out to be me ranting about my own frustrations i also realized that i shouldn't have posted the video if i can't handle people looking into my health history and claiming that chronic lyme doesn't exist i also sincerely want to apologize mm. to ethan oh for there we go okay nice uh considering his health anxiety mm. i took it as a completely different thing and that only fueled my anger in the process. I understand that looking at an irregular blood test is extremely concerning, and I shouldn't have commented on that. Having been born into health issues, I was numb to how startling it can be to be an adult and look at a blood test that nice. doesn't seem right. Also, nice. as a viewer, I can absolutely acknowledge that I reached out to them to try to work for them or ask for collaborations with crew members. But in no way did them not hiring me fuel this video. I've been trying to work for them through like a job or internship since I was 16 years old. I did not make a video six years later as a way to get back at them. My girlfriend and I are very, very grateful for the opportunity that I was given to be a full-time content creator. Lastly, there's a lot of speculation about my nonprofit Never Stop, so I thought that I would just address those as well. As well the clothing brand started in 2017 like selling things to family and friends and then in 2022 when i got a platform i decided to give 10 percent of all profits to people in need and then there was such an overwhelming amount of need for donations that i decided in 2023 to turn it into an official nonprofit mm. so that people's donations would be tax deductible since never stop is a new and small organization i pay all the startup fees so that the donations can go to people who need them and i do hope that someday never stop can sustain itself but it's just not there yet to be totally honest picking one person a month to give a few hundred dollars to is sometimes 
it awful. I mm. want to be able to do more, and right now I can't. In closing, I want to reiterate my apology to everyone affected by this video. The tone was inappropriate and scummy, mm. and that does not reflect the values that I wish to embody as a content creator. I've taken this as a learning experience, and I will commit to never repeating this mistake. From now on, I'm going to refocus my efforts on the content that brought you to my channel in the first place. Your support means the world to me, and I appreciate every single one of you, and I thank you for your understanding during this time where I try to learn and grow from this experience. Ooh, interesting. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Hi, everyone. Okay, not too shabby of an apology, honestly. I'm gonna take notes in case I ever get canceled, you know? That was not too bad, that's not too bad, okay. He acknowledged it was Ethan, he acknowledged the problem, he spoke candidly, honestly, and quickly. He didn't drag it out. Man, I hate long ass apology videos. Three minutes of my time. I appreciate that. He handled, he he basically tackled all the points I think we had concerns about. His mental health in relation to um, his job and his personal sickness. Uh, who it was, Ethan. Um, oh, the oh, I wonder if he watched my video. I don't know if he did, but I did mention in my video, I thought it was interesting that maybe him being diagnosed as a kid made a difference between being diagnosed as an adult. So maybe he watched that and realized, so that was good. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I thought that was pretty good. What do you guys think? I'm not too, I'm pretty happy with it, honestly. Yeah, I don't know what more we could want from him, but let's check out the comments and see if they were approving. Here, I'm gonna even like this video, Jake. Good job. Miss Fishy says, what would you be canceled for? Brittany, for being gay. Thank you for taking a step back to listen to criticism and not doubling down. I'm sorry for any of the comments you've gotten that, that have been too harsh. I'm glad to see you open to valid criticism. I agree. I understand people's reservations and discomfort with the original video. However, I've been in a position that you're in now. When something like chronic illness so heavily impacts your life, it can be hard to take out take a step outside that perspective okay good uh, apology video don't count unless you play ukulele in them as an h3 fan a person wait as a big h3 fan and a person whose wife has who has had lupus for 20 years the last 20 years this was a great apology thank you this one says you're not apologizing because of the consequence not because you thought you had to you're only apologizing because of the consequences not because you thought you had to Mm, I didn't get that. Did you guys think that was true? I, I don't know. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think he's apologizing just because he got canceled. It doesn't feel that way. I feel because you know why? I am going to give him the benefit of the doubt because it really sounds like he understood every part that I think we all had a problem with. He basically covered. So I think that's fine, right? Like, I think he did really good. Common says, what really surprised me is that only 10% of profit goes to the fund for Never Stop. You should just close this on the website. I think that's pretty normal for non -fund, uh, for nonprofits, right? Isn't it usually like 10%? Which is why, like, always be careful who you donate to charity because, you know, it's not always great. Condiment apology, but not bad. Yeah, not bad. I don't know. I, I don't think I can complain too much. You know, one of the better apologies I've seen. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. I've seen almost every YouTube apology and they all kind of suck. You know what I mean? Lauren says, I just went uh, I just went to watch it. I didn't realize he was only 22, 23. It's a big learning mistake. Huge. He's a young person. Let him be young. He's going to make mistakes, you know? Is there anything that really could have made his apology better? I think some people could be upset that there was editing or that he was really quick about it. But I think that's actually more appropriate. I think I appreciate that it's quick and that it's to the point and that I didn't have to sit and watch him cry but also you know feelings are feelings I think I appreciated that he didn't make it dramatic I think I appreciated that it was quick but I I, I could see somebody out there saying like oh why was it edited if it was a real but you know I'm not gonna listen to those people right yeah I think some of the h3 fans did go really hard on him maybe even I went hard on him I'm not sure um but obviously, like, yeah, it seems like he seems like an okay person. I was concerned over the employment thing and the association with the H3 cast, but surprised that he said in this video that was six years ago. So that was a pretty long time ago. Now, Papa Gut did recently cover on his own live stream that Jake also had a run-in with Demolio, Demolio, Demolio. And I think that something in Jake's personality is off-putting. But to be honest, <laughs> aren't we all a little off-putting? Like, I hate to say it, but it's not that abnormal for somebody on the internet to feel off-putting to somebody. 
It just seems like all of us have a little bit of a chip on our shoulders. And so I'm not going to hold that against him. You know what I mean? I don't know. They were, Lauren says, I mean, those were bold accusations. He he did make incredibly bold accusations, but I don't think it warrants him like leaving the internet. I don't think it warrants him um, never being a content creator. I don't think it warrants him doing anything like except coming back and being better than what he was. You know what I mean? Oh, <gasps> Ren says they're going to cancel me over being a fake bisexual white woman. Excuse me, pansexual Caucasian woman sometimes. <laughs> I think he considered starting, had gaining a platform in 2022 and he's just now having his big first controversy. He clearly took notes on what not to say or do. Yeah, that's good. People learn very slowly. Let me just say this. As a person who thinks we're evolved animals on a planet, humans are animals and we learn incredibly slowly and I'm not upset about it. I just want that to be clear to everybody else because it shocks me how when people like people re repeat mistakes over and over again. But like Jake said, he's not going to repeat the mistake again, hopefully. And we'll see what happens. Actually, that's what happens a lot in this space is like I am so shocked when people don't get what the mistake was they made in the first place. But also I've been there. I'm a grumpy, stubborn Taurus. And as Kay says, it wasn't six years ago. It started six years ago. And then he kept asking ever so often. Well, I mean, that's not completely weird. Did I ever tell you guys about the weird uh, application I did for Philip DeFranco and how I got a call for an interview? But it was like the like it was the weirdest. I just look back at all my life and I think like, oh, you are so neurodivergent. Like you are so awkward. You're such a weirdo. Like I've done so many. I've had so many weird opportunities. And I just like when you don't mesh with a group, you don't mesh. And honestly, I'm not a group player. It took me my whole life to realize I'm not a team player, even though I knew it until I turned 30. I never really believed it. And look at me even now trying to make friends with people on the Internet. And then I'm just like. Like, I'm not a team player. You know what I mean? And I think Jake might be similar, but thinks he is. Some people, they just don't mesh well in groups. And I don't know if Jake meshes well in a group. You know what I mean? But maybe he thinks he should try because that's what the world is always doing. Patty says he's asked for a job two to three years ago, I think, and stalked AB like a year ago in a hotel lobby. I mean, he didn't stalk AB. You guys know that. AB told the story. Don't do that, Patty. He didn't stalk AB, bro. AB told the story on stream and AB does not call it stalking. He calls it inappropriate, which welcome to being a content creator. People are incredibly inappropriate. Now, did he, Jake, initially give me a little stalker vibes? Sure. But you know what? I think everyone who's socially awkward gives me those vibes and it's not really the same thing. And so AB didn't tell the story like he was a stalker. So I feel like just FYI, he didn't. It was just the hotel had bad security at the time as AB tells the story and Jake found a way into the hotel lobby, which is very common with VidCon and all these other conferences. I mean, I've been there myself with bigger YouTubers. And yeah, like it's not perfect, but you try to scoop up an opportunity. I mean, remember that AB was also a fan of H3 and only got that job because he gassed up Ethan and defended him on the Internet. So you could spin that in a lot of ways. I love AB, but you could also spin it in a sense that AB manipulated his way into Ethan's life by gassing him up in a video. And that's what got AB the job. So you you know what I mean? Let's just be let's just be a little let's allow Jake to fuck up again before we completely crucify him. You know, let's like Jake. Let's let Jake. OK, fuck up one more time before we completely cancel him. Otherwise, like, let's let him make his mistakes. And also, honestly, I'm a forgiving person, so he could fuck up a few more times. He's only he's a baby. His brain's not even done developing. And if he's neurodivergent, it's going to take even longer. Stephanie says, I sometimes get annoyed when people say you're only sorry because you got caught and canceled or whatever. Um, when often it's the response that can make you reflect, realize your mistake. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, I agree. Mutually exclusive. I agree. I agree. Well, I think it's two things because the mob is so insane. You guys know how much I don't like a crowd. I do not like a crazy crowd of people. So I, as an audience, I appreciate that you don't go on other people's videos and bother them. Um, because I think it's crazy. I do think it's insane to go on Jake's video and leave comments. I've never left a comment on his videos. I don't know why I would, you know, but I make content. So I understand it's kind of similar, if not louder. So I, I get it. But like, I'm glad my audience doesn't go and leave comments on people's videos. Don't do that. Like, leave people alone to be their own version of weird. But when it's about protecting other people, I think there's something to be said about activism and bringing people together. Ultimately, Jake is a young person. He seems to have learned his lesson. 
I'm not going to hold it against him. And he already privated the video, like I said. So it should be fine. I wonder, did Ethan reply to this yet? I, I don't know if H3 has been live enough to report this. Because what will be interesting is if they have a strong opinion of it. But obviously, also, it would be inappropriate for Jake to apply to work with them, to try to be close to them, to make friends with them. At this point, it would be inappropriate for Jake to probably make content about them in a way. Maybe. Not forever. Just maybe for a little while. What do you guys think about that? Would it be weird if he just made a video as a YouTuber? Or should he wait a few, maybe a couple years? Because that's the other question is like, what's the social expectation from him? Should he never talk about Ethan again? I think it's a little harsh. Ethan's a huge content creator with like a very top podcast, right? So it feels weird to say like, oh, he can never talk about Ethan again. But maybe wait a bit. What do you guys think about that? I eat bagels. I love that username. I just love the neurodivergent vibes on this channel. Let's go. We're just a cute, we're just a cute group of neurodivergents. We're just like a cute group, you know? They go live later. Okay, I'm sure they're live tonight. Okay, I'm sure they'll talk about it tonight. Yeah. Lexi says, I commented, wondered if psychology in Seattle would grade his apology. He would probably give him props. I, I thought the same thing. I was like, where is Dr. Kirkonda? <laughs> we need, we need a review of this apology. Someone sent him the link. NSK says, I think comments are okay as long as you're, it's your honest criticism, not just a, I need to stick up for my favorite YouTuber. That's probably true. I think people leave me really good advice on my channel. People are really like thoughtful and open, you know, when they do it. So I really like that. Patty says, I think Dr. K would give him a B or B minus. Yeah, maybe. That's a pretty high, that's a kind of high grade for Dr. Kirk, right? Doesn't Dr. Kirk, does he give? I mean, I forget. I forget his ratings for other people. Yeah, interesting. Now, what did he mean? He was going to go back. Uh, Jake said he's going to go back to making the content he used to make before. But didn't the content before also send people away? Because it was kind of negative, right? Am I am I wrong on that? I wasn't a Jake viewer, so I don't know. But wasn't the content he even made before mostly call-out content? So I'm not sure that that's the lesson he should have learned. Ooh, here's a question. Because I know a lot of people wrote me and said that Jake, they had to stop watching him because his content was too negative, too complainy, and it was call-out content. So question, do you think that Jake what he really should have learned from this whole situation was just pertaining to Ethan and sick people or was it that he actually should change his content altogether? His channel, let's see, he doesn't post very often though, but he did 100, 100 videos in 100 days so that maybe he was just taking a break. Ranking my worst videos, you're disgusting using a brutal murder for TikTok views. <clears throat> this was so bad. Homicide, thirst traps, Ooh, you ruined your life. This is so insane. Why would you do this? Transphobic TikToks. Let's see. So all of it's pretty like, please stop this. What's going on? Hmm. Yeah. How is this allowed? So it's kind of complainy content, which to be fair, people love drama. But that just invites such toxic people into your bubble, you know? It's just such a toxic con, such to toxic uh, bubble to me. Hmm. Shift that content. No one can trust him after that, to be honest. Well, I'm not sure. Like, to be honest with you, I'm going to be real. If you watch call out content, if you watch only drama content, if you like to watch people get torn apart, I think you are part of the problem, personally. Um, I think drama channels, I don't recommend doing them. I don't recommend hosting them. It's different when you mix in like drama with politics, with social stuff, with pop culture. That's kind of more balanced. But when it's just negative, it's just tearing people down. There's no creativity. There's no bridge building. I do see it as like people who watch that as negative. Um, I've done calls in the past or I've had, you know, people in my life in the past who did drama channels and I just, it's so bad for their mental health. It's so bad for the audience's mental health. So I personally am not a fan of it. I don't subscribe to any T channels. Sometimes I'll check them out for more information about stuff, but I in general don't watch them. Uh, I just think they're so negative. I really think if your life revolves around like tearing people down, it's not great. Now, what's the difference between us observing people to learn from them and us tearing people down? Because I think somebody could come and say, Brittany, isn't your channel all about like criticizing people? If that's how you see my content, I do think you're a little seeing it differently than I would see it. I am talking about philosophy and I'm and I'm trying to figure out how to use people's stories to make us talk about our own stories. So obviously I'm going to criticize through my own morals, which are uh, subjective. There's no objective morality. 
So I'm not trying to be a tea channel. I'm not trying to gossip about you. I'm trying to say, oh, look, this person put out a video. This is how I strongly feel about it. I'm not condemning them. But people don't hear that part. I'm not condemning you. I don't believe in cancellations. I actually don't know if you're new to my channel. I don't believe in canceling people. I don't believe in audiences holding content creators accountable. I believe in individuals making a decision to speak out on something they believe in. But I don't believe in mob rule. I don't think it's like healthy for anyone involved. And so for me, when we're observing people, like I'm not condemning you. I'm not asking you to get kicked off the platform. And to be fair, I don't really cover people that are really, 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 really bad. So to be fair, I am commenting on people that are more than fair being here, you know, for the most part. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I just want to say that out loud in case you guys are new to my channel. I definitely want to promote you know, being thoughtful and analytical and observational, but not canceling, not tearing people down, not going after their families, not certainly not calling their jobs, like certainly not going after their livelihood. You know what I mean? Starburst says, I feel like he doesn't really want to do the drama channel stuff. He just thinks it will bring in views. He needs to do stuff he actually likes first. Well, the dilemma is like any job doing what you like might not bring in the income. I'm really lucky but I also, you know, again, I wonder at his size channel with his views, he should be making a lot more money than me. I can't figure it out. Like, there's no way. Like, my income, like, this year I made less than six figures. Still good income, right? Still good income on my small of a channel. Jake should be making at least six figures. So he shouldn't, he should be totally fine when it comes to money, right? Or at least okay on a good budget. But he seems to be always financially struggling so maybe he thinks he has to do drama, but maybe he does. Or maybe he can do drama, but in a different way. But also when you revolve your content around being sick, it can be really difficult to keep an audience because even though it's comforting, it's also really, it can be really sad. Like he said, he probably gets tons of letters from sick people and it can be very difficult to listen to hard, hard stories all the time. And it really does end up becoming a lot of emotional labor which is why even therapists need therapists because they need emotional labor. They need somebody to comfort and help them. So again, I think it's really difficult when you make your life about quote, helping people is like, there's, um, what's like, what guys, what's it called? Um, compassion burnout. Is that what it's called? Com empathy burnout, compassion burnout. There's like a burnout part of this. That seems like a duh to me, but he's young. He's so young. You know what I mean? Patty says, Jake depends on call out and collabs with bigger creators. Not bad things necessarily, but the content wasn't very good. Yeah, I well, the problem is I tried to watch a couple of them with Drew Gooden, but I just, I get bored very quickly. So I, again, I'm very neurodivergent. I'm very niche. I'm, I'm sure like ultimately I'm like queer and all these other things. Like I'm not his audience target, but you know. Oh, compassion fatigue. Thank you guys. Yes compassion fatigue. I wonder if he's suffering from that. Lindsay says, I hear creators say I don't like judgment because it's so final. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Lauren says, I'm very picky about my tea channels. I like constructive criticism. Yeah. I love constructive criticism. That shit's my, like, I love that. Tiger says, I never even hear of these people until you talk about them. I must be living under a rock. I don't even know that the Doolittle existed. No, he's just in my bubble. This is just my bubble. I, I watch H3, H3, and then people, well, to be fair, I also get sent videos. I got sent ja Jack's, Jake, Jake, Jack. Oh my God. Jake's video. So to be fair, I get it. Like I, I only come across content because my viewers send it to me and then I get come across content because I'm like, I watch H3. But I obviously knew about Jake because I don't know who sent it to me. Was it the Discord? Who sent it to me? I love Drew Gooden and I could not sit through his collab video. Interesting. Yeah, Drew seems really, really, really sweet. Um, Not my content. Like I don't watch like uh, Dan Daniel Gonzalez. Is that his name? Danny? I don't watch Danny. I don't watch Drew. They're like so sweet. They're like the sweetest boys in the world. Um, The sweetest I go is Cody Ko. If I'm going to watch a sweet boy, I'm going to watch Cody Ko and Noel, you know? Uh, let's see. It seems like he hasn't ever really found the voice or niche that he's comfy with, even though his channel is a decent size. That sucks. That must be so hard, you know? <gasps> Lexi says he did a collab with Adam about the Shane Dawson uh, at the height of the Colleen situation. I didn't know about him until recently. Really? Oh, that's so interesting, actually. Hmm. I really hope um, Adam, Adam, that's the, is that Colleen's main victim, right? I covered this story, but I don't remember anyone's names. I hope he gets a lot of help because posting about it on YouTube is not going to get him the psychological help he needs, right? Fishy says, I can't watch the Drew, Gooding, Danny, etc. that bubble. I tried, but the content never struck me. Um, Do you know why? I'm going to say this, but I don't mean it in the way that it sounds. 
they come off as people that their struggle doesn't align or overlap with my struggle. I think in order for content, again, this goes back to seeing people and seeing parts of you. In order for content to resonate with me personally, I have to feel like the content creator and I see parts of each other, not whole parts, not all parts. I love Asmongold and I feel like the part of me and him that overlap is our feeling of this is just a duh, you know, but when I watch Danny and I try to watch Drew, I don't have any overlap with them. Our struggles aren't the same. Our genders aren't the same. Our outlook isn't the same. Like nothing about us is the same. And so I feel like it's kind of like that. You know what I mean? Adam is in therapy now. Okay, let's go Discord. Let's go, Adam. Let's go. That's good. That's what we want to hear. You know what I mean? And by the way, tra uh, uh, you don't have to go to therapy just because you have trauma. Therapy is like going to the gym. You could just go to work out. You just go to update yourself. You could just go to check in. You know, saying you need to go to therapy is not a negative. It's like, hey, you need to go to the gym, bro. You need to go to the therapy. It's great. Let's do it. Lexi says, I grew up watching Colleen and Miranda, so I'm firmly aligned with Adam. Oh, oh. I never got into Miranda or Colleen either. My little brother did for a bit, but then he fell off her. I could never get into her content. I just thought she was so frustrating. But again, I, this is not, I'm not making a judgment. I'm just, I'm not moralizing it. I'm just saying my, you know, vibes. Patty says, is it problematic to bring up the theory that Jake could be a victim of medical abuse from his mother? It would explain it a lot, but maybe that isn't inappropriate to bring up. Um, I don't know anything about his mother or his past. It's possible. I wonder if he ever got re like getting diagnosed as a kid. Most of us aren't going to go get re-diagnosed. Even as an adult, you know, I never got triple diagnosed for my borderline. It's not like I went to multiple doctors to confirm it. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have seen multiple therapists or psychologists or psychi Maybe I should have seen a lot of people. But you never do that. So, you know what I mean? I think kind of what I would, I would say is that if I was Jake and I found that my life was not aligning and I wasn't joyful and something was missing, that I would go over the basics again as an adult. You know? And I could understand, like he said in his apology video, that Chronic Lyme is something that isn't always validated. And because of that, he might struggle to sort of be validated by the internet. And I think that that's fair. And I think I would want to do more research into that. But I think a lot of people aren't going to question things. It's like when white people say they're native and then they never check because their mom told them a story about how somehow down the line they were native. It's like without checking, do you ever really know? But then how many of us actually check? Most of us just believe our parents or believe the things we were told or just go, yeah, that makes sense. So you know what I mean? Like, it's very weird to check some, if you were chronically sick your whole life, it'd be weird to check, you know, because you would trust your parents. So I don't know anything about his mother. Brucey says, Brittany, how long did you stay in therapy when you did it? And when do you know it's time to take a break from it? Therapy is, is a tool. So for me, I did therapy uh, for about a year and like 15, 20, like less than 20 sessions, like 15, 20 sessions, not even. It depends on how you count it because I had to go to multiple therapists until I found the right one. Um, but I did a year of therapy and it was the greatest year of my life. It changed my life. And when I felt like I was done with it, I went on and did other things. But I will be going back for my PTSD and I do want to get assessed for ADHD and autism and dyslexia and everything else that might be going on because I would like some answers. So I think therapy is like a tool. I just don't see why you wouldn't use it if it's accessible to you. But I believe in mental health. I believe in the science behind the study of the brain and and all of these things. Like I believe in it. And I think you you go in and out of it as you need the tool. I think if you overuse the tool, it could be just as damaging as never using the tool. I also believe like you need all five things to be a whole human being. So your mental health is a part of it. But what's mental health without philosophy help? So for me, when I say like uh, therapy is useless without philosophy, it's because a lot of your mental health comes from your meaning crisis, which is an issue of philosophy, a relationship you're having with your consciousness. A lot of our mental health struggles come because we don't know what we're doing here on the planet. We're going through existential dread. We don't know how to look forward. So even though my therapy was awesome, it was nothing without my philosophy stuff. I had to understand my values, who I was. So even after I did therapy and it was um, changed my life, saved my life, truly saved my life, it wasn't complete. 
until I did therapy. I'm sorry, until I did philosophy. Then I had this understanding of like, who am I? The seeking of knowledge, the seeking of information. I truly needed it. Like I truly needed to become this whole person. Uh, and I, I, I will always be on the journey of maintaining that whole person, right? That financial health, physical health, spiritual health, mental health, and then who you are in the story. I will spend my whole life knowing and learning this person. Like I can't wait to meet myself in my 40s. I don't know who that girl's going to be. She's probably going to be hugely similar to this girl, but she's also going to be her own person, you know? So again, it's like, there's something to be said about when do you know you're done with therapy when the tool doesn't work and go back to therapy. Don't go to therapy. It's like the gym. Do you always need to go to the gym or do you need to do maintenance work? Do you sometimes need the gym? It's like know yourself well enough to know what tools are going to work for you. And that takes trial and error, right? Patty says he said his father, I'm assuming you mean Jake, left the family because he disagreed with his mother on his medical diagnosis and CPS visited them a few times from accusations of medical abuse. Uh, damn, sounds like, well, I know Jake comes from a really dysfunctional background, right? Which is why I say a lot of this is probably mental health. Dysfunction breeds dysfunction. It is so hard to break generational curses. It is so hard to grow up in a home where your parents aren't together. It's so hard to grow up in poverty. It is so ho hard. It's so hard. So Jake has probably done so much good for himself compared to where he's come from. But if you don't face that trauma, it will boil up. And I really think if you face that trauma with no grounding in your philosophy of life, why you're here, what you're doing, what's your purpose, I do think you'll probably go in cycles of dysfunction because you have to level yourself out with some understanding, you know, because if you end up getting better in therapy and then you're like, okay, now what? That still needs to be answered. Now what? Me therapy is just mental health, guys. It's just me it's one part about being a person. I don't know how much therapy Jake has been able to get and how much like specialized therapy he's been able to get. Natalia says sometimes going to multiple doctors can do more, can make more harm as you get contradicting diagnoses and causing doubts. Yeah, I can understand that as well. That's a good point. Lauren says I've been in therapy for 10 years. Everyone is so different. Everyone is so different. Ari says I started therapy this year for my OCD and ADHD and it's been life changing to feel like I'm actually progressing and moving forward and becoming a better version of myself. Let's go Let's go, let's go, let's go. Fishy says, I'm definitely not done, or I'm not done with therapy, but can't afford it. And I also don't think my main therapist really saw me. So it really felt, it only felt so helpful, fair. That's so difficult finding a good therapist who can see you and help you get to that next part of life. You know what I mean? It is difficult. It is. Yeah. Emily says, I've been watching the VODs, but this is my first live. I'm loving your content and views on things. Hello, Emily. Tiger says, would you ever make a video or slash talk about figuring out who you are in the story? Or have you done that already? Guys, have I done that specifically already? I think we've done some live shows about it, but I definitely could put something together. You know what I could do? I should make a series. I should do like a live show series for the week. I'll put, I should put together, a I should put together a PowerPoint where we talk about the five things you need to be a whole human being and then do live streams on them. You know, um, spoiler, even when you become a whole human being, you still spend the rest of your life growing. <laughs> so if you are new to my content, the thing I want to show you guys or teach you guys is that there is no ultimately one answer. There is no like end all be all. There is no universal fix. There is only gaining more tools and more information to have a better relationship with yourself. Life is a fool.